All right, so we begin now by talking and looking at more identities. So we had our basic identities that we've talked about previously, right? Our basic identities. And we've been working with uh, finding uh, and using those identities to establish other identities. What we're now going to do is take this group of identities that we already have here, right, and we're going to expand upon it. We're going to expand upon that list by checking out some other identities that will let us compute uh, further things. And the first batch that we look at are called angle sum and difference identities. It actually involves trying to do a trick function and apply it to a difference between two angles. So, for example, we ask the question, in terms of alpha and beta, what would the cosine of alpha minus beta be? All right, remember that little squiggly fish shape? That is the Greek letter alpha. And the B shape is the Greek letter beta. Okay, and so we're going to be talking about uh, computing those uh, for those given angles. Now, if we know what they are, like we had cosine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees, of course, we could go on a calculator and put in just cosine of 15 degrees. But remember, for 45 and 30, we have exact values. So it would be nice to be able to come up with an exact value for that cosine of 15. And that's what this identity is, that's what this identity is going to allow us to do. Now, to come up with it, we first uh, put a few limitations on alpha and beta uh, to just make the uh, math of what we're going to do uh, work out. So we consider two angles here, alpha greater than beta uh, in standard position. And so, beta, we say, has to be greater than or equal to zero, uh, less than alpha, which is less than 2 pi. So we stay within one full turn, because if alpha was bigger than one full turn, that's okay. All right, we could always find a coterminal angle. We could always go to a coterminal angle and get one smaller. So we're going to draw some pictures here. First, uh, let me draw in my axes here. And we're going to take a circle and pop on that axis. Uh, we're going to make that circle have a radius of 1. And this point right here, of course, on the unit circle, uh, is uh, the point one zero. And then so beta uh, can be any angle as long as it's less than alpha and less than 2 pi. So I'm going to draw it just so it happens to fall in the first quadrant here. So remember our definition of trig functions would make this point be cosine alpha, or sorry, cosine beta, sine beta. That would be the coordinates of that point. And then I'm going to pick a second point here, or second angle here, just so it happens to be this angle. Uh, and that angle is angle alpha. Angle alpha. So this point on the circle would be cosine alpha, sine alpha. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I just completely, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, cosine alpha, sine alpha, cosine beta. Sorry, my mind just stopped working for a moment. And then what we're actually going to be interested in is 
the distance between those two points. The distance between those two points. Okay. So, call that distance here D. All right, that's what we're going to be interested in. And this value D also relates to this angle here, which is the angle inside, and that is actually just alpha minus beta. All right, that's that angle there, the little orange angle inside my picture is alpha minus beta. Okay, that's that angle right there. Now, that's the first picture I look at. First picture we take a look at. Okay, and now we're going to look at a second picture here. Okay, and the second picture also is going to involve a unit circle. So we also still have the point one zero. And then what we're going to do is take this picture that I have on the left here, and I'm going to rotate this angle this way until it lies with the one side there along. So the, the red line B here lies alongside the positive x-axis. And so in my picture, I would have something that looks like this. Uh, okay. And then I still have this same distance D because all I've done is rotate the picture. So I still have the same distance D and this angle here now inside in standard position is alpha minus beta. So again, all I did was take my picture over here and took this thing and rotated it so that it's now laying this way. And so I still have this same distance D on both of them. And my angle inside now is alpha minus beta. And so Therefore, this point right here on the circle would have coordinates cosine alpha minus beta, comma, sine of alpha minus beta. And so in both of these pictures, the distance D here is the same distance in both pictures. It's the same distance in both pictures. Okay, and you can tell that because even if we take everything else away, these are going to end up being similar triangles because they have that same uh, angle, uh, and then you have these sides as well that are all the same, right? Two sides of length one and the side of length D there. Okay, so uh, they are the same. And we're actually going to use this geometric setup <clears throat> excuse me, to talk about, to actually find a relationship for this cosine alpha minus beta. Okay, so here's what we do. Uh, two things we need to remember or need to recall from the past. Uh, the first is our distance formula. All right, the distance between two points. Remember, that's the formula, D equals the square root of the difference of the x's squared plus the difference of the y's terms squared on your two points. All right, so it's a little pre-calc one formula there, the distance formula. And then the second formula we need is one we're gonna use a few times here. And that is for squaring a quantity a minus b quantity squared. Remember that would just be a minus b times a minus b. And if we multiply it out, we'd have a times a is a squared. And then in the middle, we'd have a minus a b and another minus a b. So we would have two of them. And then minus b times minus b 
would be plus b squared. So normally don't bother having a formula for squaring a two-term polynomial. We usually just multiply it out. But we're going to be doing this uh, quite a few times now. Uh, so we want to be using that. I'm going to refer to that formula as formula 1. I'm going to give it a little side note there is formula 1. And so we're going to make use of this squaring formula multiple times because what we know is that in the two pictures here, this length d and this length d have to be the same. Have to be the same. So if I use the distance formula to find the distance between the blue point here and the red point, that distance should be the same as the distance from the orange point here and the black point here, 1, 0. And so we're going to apply our distance formula and set those two things equal, and that's going to give us a relationship between cosine alpha minus beta, sine alpha minus beta, and cosine alpha, sine alpha, cosine beta, sine beta. And then upon some little algebraic simplification, we're going to get an interesting formula is going to fall out of this. So we begin first with the distance formula on the left hand side. So that would be the difference of the x terms, cosine alpha minus cosine beta, quantity squared. and then plus the difference of the y values, sine alpha minus sine beta, quantity squared, equals the distance on the other side. The difference of the axis, cosine alpha minus beta minus one quantity squared, and sine alpha beta minus zero quantity squared, all under the square root. cosine alpha minus beta minus one quantity squared plus sine alpha minus beta minus zero quantity squared. Okay? So we take our formula here and we're gonna clean this up. Now, as we clean it up, we're going to do two things here at once to save a whole lot of writing. Uh, since I have a square root, equal, square root equal to a square root, I'm going to begin by squaring both sides. I'm going to begin by squaring both sides. So I'm going to do that. <coughs> um, and that'll make the radicals go away. And then I'm going to use my formula 1 here to expand cosine alpha minus cosine beta squared, sine alpha minus sine beta squared, and cosine alpha minus beta minus 1 squared using this formula each time. So it's always the first thing squared minus twice their product plus the second thing squared. So that will give me cosine squared of alpha minus 2 cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine squared of alpha, or sorry, sorry, not sine squared, that should be just cosine squared, sorry, my mind uh, just uh, stopped working for a second, that would be cosine squared of beta, cosine alpha minus cosine beta, and then plus sine squared alpha minus 2 sine alpha, sine beta plus sine squared of beta. And I'm kind of running out of the room here a little bit, so I'm going to drop down here equals. And work on the second part, cosine alpha minus beta minus 1 squared. So that'll be cosine squared of alpha minus beta minus twice the product of those two things, so that'll just be 2 cosine alpha minus beta plus 1 squared, which would just be 1. And then the last one here is pretty easy to straightforward to do. 
because we subtract zero, it goes away, and we just have sine squared of alpha minus beta. So that's the uh, first step is uh, we square both sides to make the radicals go away and then simplify it inside. And now I want you to notice some things here. First things first, I have a cosine squared alpha and I have a sine squared alpha. So those things are just going to combine to be one on the left hand side here. I'm just going to have a one and I'm going to shade that green because it comes for the two terms. And then I also here have a cosine squared beta plus a sine squared beta. All right, those are also going to be one. Oops. And then what's left is a minus two cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus two sine alpha, sine beta, on the left hand side and now moving over to the right hand side I have a cosine squared of alpha minus beta and a sine squared of alpha minus beta of course those are going to combine by that Pythagorean identity to be one and then I have the other one that's there as well plus one and then minus my two cosine alpha minus beta. And so what I want you to see here is that my 1 plus 1 here, which is 2, and my 1 plus 1 over here, which is also 2, are going to both cancel out. And so that leaves me then with just minus 2 cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus 2, sine alpha, sine beta, equals minus 2, cosine alpha minus beta. <clears throat> and now we just clean this up by noticing that all three of those things have a minus 2 coefficient, so we divide that completely out. And when we do, we get this identity that the cosine of alpha minus beta, so just kind of reversing the order because it's equals, equals cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. And so now we have this relationship here, uh, this identity it says these two things have to be equal because they began, they came about from an equation that we knew had to be true. And so we actually have a relationship now uh, between these two quantities. Uh, and this is our first identity, the angle difference of a cosine.